So we're, um, as the introducer said, from a care home group, and uh, our presentation is sort of covering a slightly different space from the earlier ones, in as much as we are looking at it from the care home point of view, and so assistive technology applies slightly different in that uh, in that context, and hopefully we can inspire you with the great potential that there is for technology to be applied in uh, care homes as well. So the first question to ask, and maybe you're asking it in your mind at the moment, what about assistive technology in the broader sense in the care home environment, um, given that there's staff already available there to uh, assist, supervise and monitor? Picking up on Sarah's comment just now, but they're needing to be somebody on the other end of the phone. So care homes obviously are fully staffed 24-7 and there are people there to do the assistance and supervision. Why do you need telecare? Um, and residents' uh, disabilities often impair their ability to actually use technology themselves. <coughs> so there's a bit of a distinctive uh, sort of situation there. But the nub of our presentation today is to say that technology can assist in the care home environment, but more with social needs, which we would contend are just as important as people's physical stroke health needs and we do therefore need to use technology in this uh, context given again picking up on Sarah's point that people families are so spread out nowadays and are hooked to those good old blackberries so <laughs> if not their iPads <laughs> uh, so uh, so that's the one point the second thing is that obviously there's huge numbers of people still in care home environments, not quite as many I understand as are cared for at home, but it's still the same sort of order of magnitude. So this is a big space and high quality care does need to be delivered in that space if those all important uh, discharge or um, hospital admissions are to be uh, avoided and uh, if care is to be del delivered in a consistently high quality way so that never mind hospital admissions, uh, what do they call them, adult protection alerts and all these sorts of things are avoided uh, before they ever happen. Just a little bit about us. Again, another distinctive about our presentation, we are not a, uh, obviously a local authority or the NHS, nor are we a company trying to sell any form of technology. We are purely a user of this technology and very happy to share uh, whatever learning we've uh, had from the technology we've used. I have to acknowledge CETA, uh, who have funded some of the technology that we use and so we're very keen that the, the, the industry should benefit uh, from that. So we've invested in e-technology in a number of areas. The first thing is we have electronic records which are uh, accessible to family and friends online which has been a huge uh, benefit to them. Also just to monitor what's happening in the home to monitor that quality we have nurse call system data that's available remotely and we have our bespoke social networking system that was uh, the development of which was funded by CETA and uh, soon but not the, t the, the subject of this presentation barcoded medication management with web-based records which should huge, hugely improve another big area of risk in the care home environment. So just electronic care plans data reports uh, very simply off the self package no fancy uh, technology really really basic stuff it uh, just free, uh, allows then whoever delivers the care to be the one that, that writes it up. Uh, it allows us to have a clear um, date time stamping system, so there's a clear audit trail, and care plan reviews can therefore be far more easily part of our management reporting system. It's not something that's hid away in paper files that we can't get access from. Everybody can see it, uh, everybody who's authorised can see it from wherever they are, uh, maybe even on their Blackberry. So, uh, and a web link allowing all records to be securely accessed by families and their friends. And every time that a care plan is updated, um, the families can be, uh, are emailed to inform them of that update. Because basically, in the care home sector, our big challenge isn't first and foremost technology, I guess. It's having a service which is far more personalised than it's ever been before. So our challenge is on a scale of several hundred people, how do we make our service far more personalised and care plans are written around those particular people rather than all these motherhoods and generalised statements that uh, might only approximately apply. So this 
technology is not disabling people, in my opinion, or making them into uh, sort of samey individuals. It's actually helping us to be far more individualized to and wrapped around what their needs are. This is just a, a snapshot of one of our uh, websites is the home we have in um, Kent. Alison's the general manager there. We'll introduce you to her in a minute. But this is just the sort of picture that friends and families can see when they log in. This is Jane Smith's uh, just fictitious sort of records, date and time stamped and shows people what's going on. And it's been amazing the growth of this in the last few years. If the link ever were to go down momentarily, the number of phone calls we now get, what's happened, I can't see what happened to mum yesterday sort of thing. So, and similarly with the care plan, every month that can be uh, updated and families can have their input to it and come back to us with their views, which often are very insightful given the lifetime of experience they have with mum and we <coughs> might only be uh, getting to know her. Then another really high risk period in care homes and hospital admissions can happen from this period just as easily is the nighttime setup and obviously with lower staffing levels and less supervision there is just a chance that those really regular checks don't happen just like what we would like them to. So the technical infrastructure again is the easy bit. It's already in place in most homes. Data links really cheap and easy to install. It's really easy to have a policy of staff uh, pressing a present button every time they're in a room and that can't be automated fortunately and this is really easy just to download into a report every morning and uh, how we've tackled that it's not high tech we've outsourced to uh, a provider in uh, in India that every morning that data is downloaded and emailed to us and this is the sort of uh, report that gets presented there's during the night time this is a real report this is from Kettlewell House and Woking where um, in their hourly increments, there's the number of times that present button was pressed in each of those rooms. So the idea is every two hours, each room gets visited. And we've more or less did that <coughs> that night, which is quite good. So and just bringing that report onto the agenda every day and staff knowing that that is presented has, I think it's fair to say, very significantly changed uh, behavior overnight when the rest of us are sound asleep. So, onto the social networking system. This is a bit more interesting, I think. Um, bespoke system funded by CETA. Uh, it's this, this is basically a private messaging system for residents, friends, and families, and is based on the premise that families very often, even with the best will in the world, can't get to visit as often as they would like. But again, back to the good old black brace. Everybody's using them, so let's uh, be on their case and make sure they do keep in touch with the, the resident that they've placed with us. <clears throat> so it uses both SMS texting and online messaging. And the whole idea on this one, unlike the care plan system where information about the resident is given to the families, this one is us on the family's case ensuring that they share their lives inbound with granny. Because my uh, sort of contention on this is that an 85-year-old much prefers to know what her 21-year-old great-grandchild is doing today than she does like playing bingo. So that's what this is all about. <coughs> and uh, the residents are fully supported by dedicated uh, social assistance. So I just thought, just a little bit of uh, role-playing. This is Mary Smith sitting here, quite a happy resident just uh, <laughs> settling into Hawkins House. And uh, Mary now very typically has a couple of children now <coughs> in their 50s, unlike Mary, who's just a tad older. <laughs> 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 and uh, one of the daughter, <laughs> funny enough, Caroline in this case is actually involved in uh, sort of the care world. So for Caroline, it has been particularly difficult this transition for mum into a care home. She knows so much about care. She's been so closely involved with mum's care. She, can she trust us as a care provider to do the right thing? And then there's uh, John, the son. He's really busy with his job. He's been so guilty that he can't come to visit mum as often as he was like, would like, but he just relies on Caroline for her advice on whether or not the, the care uh, is going well. So we've got um, Bonnie here who is uh, the social assistant at Hawkins House. And her task today is to work with Mary just to 
address her social uh, needs and find out how things are going. Over to you, Bonnie. Hello, everyone. Um, as Annie said, I'm a social assistant, so I get the chance to bridge the gap between the generations through the social networking. So I'm doing it for the moment. So, Mary, what would you like to do today? Well, Ernie is still on my line, but I'm bored <laughs> doing bingo. <laughs> 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 Bonnie's a pretty quick texter, isn't she? <laughs> <laughs> you try and match her speed. <laughs> oh! <laughs> said it already. This is an iPhone, not a Blackberry. <laughs> so, there we are. There we are. <laughs> Gone. <laughs> so anyway, just a light-hearted little sketch there, hopefully, that illustrates the social aspect of how technology could be used in an environment where families are spread out, working really hard, and Gran is still desperate to know what those children are up to and to have some sort of relationship and, and in a way, allow them still to be involved in her life. So um, hopefully... Technology in our care home environment, even though it isn't the traditional telehealth, telecare applications, can still be used, but slightly differently, to promote more personalised care planning and review. This is the nub of what we have to deliver in our transformation agenda within care homes. We need to improve consistency of care delivery, make sure that those really important tasks that are routine but need to be happening day in and night in, night out, all the time, and to be monitored accordingly improve our staff, or staff supervision, reduce risk, and enhance residents' well-being through improved communication with family and friends. There you are. Thank you very much. Thank you.